What is going on, Governor Shisco here? Today, we're going to give you an overview of the Shadow Legion invasion, and we're going to give you a bunch of tips and tricks, how to organize it as an alliance leader, how to smash it as a player. If you like Rise of Kingdoms videos where we review the latest events, you should like and subscribe. We review every event in Rise of Kingdoms, and we are a sponsored creator with Rise of Kingdoms. My friends, what you're watching is called Shadow Legion. Waves of troops are sent out to smash your city, and they do attack your city, but fear not, your troops will not die. Unless, I guess, your hospital fills up, but man, that would be a pretty impressive Feet. Now, waves of troops will be sent at cities, a total of 25 waves, and at the conclusion of that event, there is a Shadow Legion fortress that you as an alliance go and rally to conquer. This event is kicked off by the R4 or R5, um, the R5 is the alliance leader, for your alliance, and it's important to pick a single time that works for the most people because guess what? You can only run this event once over the course of the three days that it is taking place. Now, the thing that's a little weird about this event is that there are individual contribution points and also alliance points. And your individual contribution is going to be matched against every single player within your kingdom, and there are better rewards for the people who do the most damage, who get the most points. Now, there's a number of ways that you can score points in this event. One way is simply waiting until your city is attacked. Another way is to battle the marches that are traveling in the field, and yet another way is to reinforce the cities of people who are getting attacked. The rule that we use in our alliance is that you cannot attack the marches in the open field for the Shadow Legion. Now, why do we have that rule? If we allow everybody to run around attacking the marches for the Shadow Legion, it honestly is really stressful for the people who are doing that, and you're taking points away from everybody else who would have their hit city hit, but they're not online. You're actively preventing them from being able to get a completion score for their individual rewards. So um, we allow players to reinforce other cities. We don't allow players to attack the open field marches so that everybody can get some points even if they're not online. This, I think, is a really important rule. And we actually enforce this rule by kicking people out of the alliance if you are attacking in the open field. That's how we policed it. We give you a warning and then we kick you, and we shared those rules in an alliance mail, and we were we had like 35 plus people on Discord voice when this was happening, so I mean like we were having a grand old time. This event took about an hour and 10 or so minutes for us to complete all 25 of these waves running around um, hitting player cities, and it's worth mentioning that there will be these Shadow Legion fortresses spread out throughout the map, and troops will originate from many of those fortresses, even though as an alliance leader, you're only selecting one of those fortresses to start the event, and that is the fortress you will rally at the end of the event in order to conclude it. Now, theoretically, if some number of the cities within your alliance are defeated, if not enough people actually survive all these waves, then your alliance is going to fail the event. Um, this is why, in part, reinforcing player cities is a pretty good habit to be getting into. Now, if you're trying to make sure your city does well, you're going to want those sweet, sweet garrison commanders that we've been talking about in many of our videos. I'll have a card up in the top for one of my very first garrison commander videos about punishing your enemies. With that said, if you're a free-to-play player, um, you're going to want to be defending against single marches, which means single target damage is going to be more valuable than usual. So a commander pairing like Pelagius and Ulji Mundok would be a very good pairing. I also love Sun Tzu so gosh darn much. I feel like Sun Tzu with an Ulji Mundok would also be a mighty fine pairing. Um, I also really like I mentioned Pelagius, um, any garrison commander that does single target. At the legendary tier, you want to do a bunch of damage, so, you know, Yi Songye is really good, Richard and Charles are, of course, fantastic, Wu Zetian, and um, it's uh, Constantine, 
are really, really strong choices. You got a lot of options for how you run your garrison, but I laughed when I saw somebody was running like a CPO as their garrison commander, which to me didn't make a ton of sense, but you know, we're all still, some folks are still learning and those individuals might have had their marches other places. So let's talk about this for a second. When your city hall sits a certain level, you can have five marches running around in the open field. Don't forget to leave your garrison commanders back in your city if you are at all worried about your city being defeated. Now, we were running around with five marches. What sorts of marches should you be running around with? And you can see we're changing our view from city to city as we relocate our marches to try to um, defend as many cities as possible. You want commanders that move really quickly to be going between cities. And in a perfect world, you're going to have those commanders spread out across a lot of disparate locations in the map, reinforcing different groups of cities so you can run between them. Optimally, you're having support commander primaries. That way you get the hasty departure movement speed, and you can go very fast from city to city. In general, you want to be using cavalry because cavalry go super freaking fast. And that's how you can get across city to city really fast to try to maximize your points from helping other player cities if you're following the same sorts of rules that we're following. Now, as this is happening, the Shadow Legion troops will be dropping presents onto the ground. I know, kind of weird, right? Like, oops, we left behind a present. Um, but when you go and you pick up one of those presents, you get the reward contained within it. With that said, we found that in most cases, the rewards were not amazing. They're like 500,000 stone. Now, maybe those rewards will amp up in higher tiers of difficulty for this event. I expect they will. What you're watching now is the normal tier of difficulty. We're on normal difficulty because you have to beat every single difficulty level. At, a, at the next highest difficulty in order to advance the, to the higher difficulty. So you got to beat it on easy to get to normal. We did that last round, so now we're on normal. You got to beat normal to get to the next difficulty and so forth. Um, there are good things that can drop from those presents that I was describing earlier, though. There are patterns that can drop from those presents. And in just a moment, we'll show you the rewards that we got for this event. And we're going to open up all of the chests associated with those winnings so that you can see them. Now, if you're picking up those rewards on the ground, you may want to think twice about even picking them up at all, because when you pick them up, there is a six-minute timer in which you cannot pick up any other rewards. Would I have felt silly picking up 500,000 food only to, a minute later, see a pattern show up on the ground and not be able to pick it up? Yeah, that would really suck. So you got to make your choice to figure out, am I going to pick up what's here now, or am I going to reserve my ability to pick up something better later? Uh, one final thing worth mentioning is that this may be more relevant as we get to harder difficulties, but the troop type that the enemy brings will change. Um, you're going to want to bring a type of troop that counters what the enemy is doing, and you evaluate that by looking at the event details, and it'll tell you basically what the troops are weak to, if it's archers or infantry or cavalry, and that may influence some of your choices for how you play this event. Okay, I think that shows enough of the footage, enough of how we played it. This is at 1x speed. P.S. I love that they do emojis. I love that they do emojis. And the, the Shadow Legion even uses emojis that are not available to us yet. That is hilarious. Um, let's do this. Let's cut back over to the present. And let's open up the goodies that we got for this event. All right, here we are in my city. Let's go and check out the rewards that we got. We're sitting on 10 treasures of the Shadow Legion and 10 Shadow Legion material bundles. It is these material bundles that I'm perhaps more excited about. You can get a lot of materials from these chests. We've got 10 of these chests to rip open. Let's start here. Then let's make our way to the treasure of the Shadow Legion and then... While we're in this video, we could open up a couple other goodies that I got other places. We've got some escort bounties that we could open and some kingdom supply chests from the stage one of our KVK. We'll just open those. Um, let's start rocking these Shadow Legion material bundles and we'll open these one at a time. Hashtag maximum suspense. So here we go. 
10 green leather. Uh, when you get a green, you get 10 of it, which is pretty awesome. Next up, 10 wood. Next up, 10 silk. Now we've got 10 more wood. The last round, I was pretty sure you could get different color tiers of this. We got 10 more wood and now 10 stone. We've got 10 more stone. Let's open all three of the remaining ones at once. Boom, there we go. Five blue materials. Now, five blue materials is way better. Way better than 10 of the green materials. Um, it takes uh, four green materials to make one blue material. So just purely from a quantity of material standpoint, we're winning when we got that blue material. The five leather is really great. So I love getting all those materials so we can craft gear and contain within the treasures of the Shadow Legion is gear that we can craft. Now, what gear is that? Windswept bracers and boots, Quinn's soul, which is a chess piece, uh, Gladiator, which is legs, Shadow Legion's retribution, which is a legendary chess piece, and Ian's choice, which are legendary gloves. However, you only get fragments of those patterns, so it's going to take a while to even be able to craft those. Let's start to open some of these and show what that looks like. We got 10 windswept bracer blueprint fragments, which is kind of awesome. 10 is a good number. Uh, you get 10, I think, when you open a blue. Three gladiators blueprints and one Ian's choice. This is legendary, but only one. This is going to take a long time. Next up, 10 windswept uh, boots. Awesome. I don't think we had any of those up until this point. Now we've got more legendary gloves. I'll take it. Next up, Legendary chess piece, one of 30. <laughs> one of 30 to be able to unlock the pattern. More boots, that's awesome. We might be on the verge of being able to do this pattern. Here we go. One more legendary chess piece. And there we go. We got a full boot unlock here, so we can make the windswept boots now. We've got to have the materials, but we'll have enough pattern pieces. Let's do the final piece. One more Ian's Choice Blueprint Fragment Gloves. So let's go in and see how many now we can actually craft because this is our second Shadow Legion event. So if we go in and take a look here, we do have two blueprints we can make. I'm pretty sure that we now can make the gloves. Yes, amazing. And bada boom, we can make the boots. This is awesome. We have now... Uh, let's see here, 6 Karox Humility, 24 of the Gladiator uh, for, uh, Blueprint. We've got 3 of Ian's Choice, 4 of Shadow Legion's Retribution, and 6 of Quinn's Soul. So those are going to take a very long time to be able to craft at all. But let's go here and take a look in the Blacksmith. If we look at the sets, which is this icon down at the very bottom... We can make now two pieces of the Windswept set. The boots do Cavalry Health 2% and 3% March Speed, which is very good. Um, and the gloves do 2% Cavalry Health and a 3% March Speed, which is also really good. 6% March Speed is great. I'm going to point out, however, that there are infantry stats on these. You could put them on infantry for March Speed, and that would not be unreasonable. Infantry go real slow. It would not be unreasonable to give them a little boost. Now, if we look at other cavalry items that are available, um, I've got edged boots, and I actually have the special talent on these. It gives 1.5% of cavalry attack. So, theoretically, these boots offering 2% cavalry health, and with the um, special talent offering, I believe it will be 3% total cavalry health, would be really quite strong. It would be a level up from the boots we have today. The area where I struggle a little bit is the gloves. These gloves are 2% health. Well, guess what? I've got 8% of stats right now from Iset's Sufferance, the epic gloves, and they have the special talent. So I'm not sure I would actually use these on a primary cavalry commander. That primary cavalry commander is going to be used for rallies, I would assume. And if that's the case, I want those stats rather than the march speed. But speaking of stats, it's worth calling attention to the fact that when you craft this set, you are going to be getting a set 
bonus for two pieces, which is a 2% attack bonus, which is pretty nice. That's a nice little addition uh, to what you're getting here. I'm definitely going to be crafting these. I probably will be diverting from what I was crafting in order to do that. I was working toward Sacred Grips, but I feel like I would like to gear out a second cavalry commander. I feel like I'm a little behind on that activity, quite frankly. Um, right now, when we look at my commanders, I've got one absolutely decked out cavalry commander who's looking real, real good. I think, I, as I mentioned, I would keep the edged boots and Isset's sufferance combo on whoever my main rally leader is, but I would probably use that blue set on uh, my second cavalry commander uh, who's in the field. Right now, that's set to be a Minamoto. I don't know why I have this helmet on. I'm probably just because I'm just tired of looking at a notification telling me I had a helmet that was unapplied. Uh, but this is my, you know, cavalry gear right now. Um, I probably will make the gloves and then the boots, and then I probably will go ahead and try to craft the next set of Vanguard Greaves and a Vanguard Halberd, possibly even going for the special talent. That will be my next step gear-wise. I don't know that I need to record that now, although, I don't know, let's just get a look how close I would even be toward obtaining those. If we get a peek here, we need 20 of the um, cloth, 10 blue feathers, and 20 bones. That seems like something we could do pretty gosh darn easily. And for the gloves, we need 20 more cloth. We need 10 bones, so 10 more of those, and 20 of the crystals. So if we go look at our material... We've got um, a bunch of the stones. I don't think a stone was needed. Oh my gosh, memory. We've got actually a low amount of bones. Bones would be a problem. We'd have to use some universal chests to pull that off. We could probably get to enough crystals. And cloth is in a pretty good place at this point. I mean, we've really got a choice to make here. Do we focus on gear diversity right now. So we've got another cavalry commander that's in a really good place. And, and it could be an infantry commander, right? Like you could use those two pieces of gear on an infantry commander. If we did, if we did use that gear on an infantry commander, right now I've got my best infantry gear on... Where is that? Where did I put my best infantry gear? That's kind of hilarious. I think I have it for Sunset Canyon on my Sun Tzu. This is my best set of infantry gear. Uh, we would get a little bit of a boost just from stats on the boots, and the gloves would actually be a downgrade on stats. So if I used it on infantry, it would really be for open field for sure because it's all about the march speed. I guess the set bonus makes up for the offset here from the gloves, but I'm more inclined to do another cavalry commander here rather than an infantry commander. That commander probably will be Minamoto. My gear's all over the place for Sunset Canyon right now. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right, my friends. Hopefully you enjoyed this video where we went over Sunset Canyon. I had a lot of fun doing this, and I suppose we could open the Escort's Bounty that we got just sitting here, level three, nothing burger. We open up the Escort's Bounty level two, nothing burger, some stone, and we can open up all 29 of these Kingdom Supply Chests. Why not? Here we go. Boom. We've got some food, some stone, a gold key, one three-day speed up, which is fine, uh, two stars, and five eight-hour speed ups, nine three-hour speed ups. You know, it's fine. It's totally fine. All right. If you enjoyed this video, like and subscribe. Let me know what you think about the Shadow Legion invasion. And until next time, you have fun smashing the kingdom.